Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in and today I have my good friend Carlos joining us once more. Hello. And we're going to be taking a closer look at the brand new release by the company Bulgari and this one is called Wood Neroli so stay tuned. So again, this fragrance was released in 2019. The perfumer for this one is Alberto Morias. Alberto Morias has been very hard at work this year. He actually busy, has his busy. own line. <laughs> he has worked on Gucci's Memoir du Nodeur. He worked on this one and many, many other designer fragrances. And the whole luxury Gucci the Alchemist well. Garden. Yes. Yes. He actually did all of those fragrances, which are layerable. I hope to do a video on that in the future because I've actually had the opportunity to try some of them. There are some and good ones. And they are quite good. So this one is called Wood Neroli. And this one is a flanker of the original Bulgari Man, obviously. So I have the original. And then I also have Bulgari Man in Black. And of course, I've done a review of Wood Essence as well. If I remember, and I usually forget, but if I remember, I'm going <laughs> to link those videos down below so you guys can check them out and learn a little bit more about those fragrances. But as the name of this one implies, this one is a Neroli dominant scent with a bit of wood added to it as well. If you take a look at the note breakdown, there's Neroli, there's Orange Blossom, there's Woodsy Notes, there's Cedar. So you have really just a plethora of different notes in this one. So the box for this one has a very simple design to other fragrances released within this collection. Just has the name of the company and the name of the fragrance in the front. And they chose to go with a more green slash olive looking color palette for this presentation. Also, please note that this is Eau de Parfum Concentration, and I here have in my hand the 60 milliliter bottle. The information, if you're looking to authenticate your purchase, can be located on the bottom of the box, and you will see the serial number printed in blue ink at the very top of the UPC there. The back of the box just has the ingredients on it. Now, the juice inside the bottle for this one has a very similar color to the one on the box, and it also just has Bulgari at the top, Bulgari Man, and Wood Neroli at the bottom in a gold font. On the bottom of the bottle, you will find a sticker with the information that should coincide with the ones found on your box if you're looking to authenticate your purchase. The top of the bottle just says Bulgari in a circular fashion. And it should also be noted that this bottle has a mechanism that allows you to lock the sprayer in case you're traveling so it doesn't misfire in your bag. And the distribution for Bulgari Man Wood Neroli is a little bit narrow, but it gets the job done. Let's continue with the smell. So since you are the honorary guest, uh, what do you think in terms of the smell? As soon as I sprayed it on my skin, I thought, hey, that smells familiar. It smells like Neroli Portofino or uh -huh. Neroli Portofino Forte, Yeah. to be a little more exact. And it definitely has a vibe similar to that. It not, has a lasting power, yeah. It's not quite as vibrant as the Tom Ford, in my opinion, but it, it is a related smell for sure. It's a in the same wheelhouse as you always say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. So it doesn't have as much of that citrus, that bright opening that Neroli Portofino does. Neroli Portofino, in my opinion, is all about the citrus. It's all about the Neroli and the assorted citrus notes in the opening, the bergamot. And the sparkle. <laughs> and the sparkle, yeah. So that sparkle is certainly evident in Neroli Portofino, but the comparison is warranted. Even if you go on Fragrantica.com, which is one of the biggest online fragrance forums, you will see that a lot of people are comparing this one to Neroli Portofino. Where does this one stand out? So there's also amber, there's amber grease, there's cedar wood, there's some woodsy notes in the base. And in my opinion, this one has an ambery warmth in the base. You have to look for it. You're not going to smell it in the air. At least I don't think so. It's not as loud as the citrus components in the yeah. scent. But if you really give it a chance to dry down, and I'm talking about three, three and a half to four hours later, you are going to be able to smell a little bit of that ambery warmth. The amber grease, I don't think has as much of an influence in here in the sense that it doesn't smell salty, aquatic, mm -hmm. oceanic, or anything like that. However, it's more of an emphasis on the Neroli and the woods. Um, what do you think about this one in comparison to the other fragrances also released within this line. I wasn't a fan and actually just today moved the previous one to this one, which was Man Wood Essence. Yeah, what a name. I know. <laughs> I got a lot of comments on that one. I wasn't so crazy about that one. Okay. I just didn't love it. This is a like for me. Yeah. I like it better than the previous one, but I don't love it. Yeah, well said. I don't like this. Well, I didn't like the previous one as much as I do this one. This one I do like. My favorite, hands down, has to be Bulgari Man in Black. 
There's mm-hmm. just something about it. The resins, the richness, the spice, the cinnamon, the sweetness. Booziness. Booziness. It kind of reminds me of Spice Bomb a little bit, but not as youthful or playful. It's a little bit more suave. This one, on the other hand, definitely takes things in a lighter direction. So this is almost like their take on Artisan um, Pure by John Varvatos, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sorry. Is, I'm laughing at suave because I know your library of words. <laughs> I've never heard you say suave before. I'm trying to vary it up <laughs> a little bit. Give me some credit. But, uh... <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> But this one is actually quite good. I do enjoy this one. In terms of an Aroli dominant scent, I think it's one of the better ones on the market. Uh, I would presume that there would be a lot of people out there haven't gotten their nose on Neroli Portofino who would actually choose Neroli Portofino over this one. But at the designer level, and it's pretty affordable. Yeah, it's honest, half the price. Guys. It's less than half the price. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Neroli Portofino bottle. is too... 30-ish, right? 235. 235. The Forte is 350. That was the first Tom Ford that was that expensive that I broke the three mark. <laughs> yeah, that's Not my first fragrance that broke the three mark. 450 mil, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's quite pricey. I wouldn't do it. Um, My personal... My, the person who usually helps me, my person at Bergdorf wasn't there that day, uh-huh. but the guy who sold to me said, oh, that's like a gold plate. That's why it cost so much. He played. I was like, no. son, that is not gold. <laughs> I know a thing or two about the industry, and these little accents on the presentation don't change the price by much at all. But in any case, you know, in economics, there's something known as a Veblen good, which is a product that is highly sought after because of the uh, face value and the fact that it is so expensive. And I don't think that's the case with this one. This one is very affordable. It's easy to wear. It's easy to pull off. Albeit a little bit simple, but I do like the accent of the woods and the amber in the base. So. There's no complicated anything going on here. It's pretty straightforward. What you smell is what you get. What they say that it is, is what you smell. Yeah. And it's pretty almost linear, if you will. There's the citrus opening, but then the woody dry down. So it's uh, it's fairly, like, it goes like this. Agreed. Yeah. I don't. Again, I don't think it's complicated. Very easy to pull off. And I actually prefer this over a lot of the other fragrances that were released on the designer level this year. So I do prefer this over some of uh, Alberto Morias's other creations that he's done. So, but you haven't smelled Sauvage Parfum yet, so you can't say that yet. Is that him? <laughs> No, it's not no, him. No, it's Francois but Machine. We're talking about we're talking about a designer. <laughs> oh yes, of course. No, of course. I haven't smelled that one yet, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more released this year. So I'm definitely <laughs> going to have my my eyes and my nose open for that. But um, I hope you guys really appreciated the video in terms of the longevity, because I know a lot of people will give me slack if I didn't uh, mention the longevity. I got about five hours on this one. So, <laughs> given the fact that it's a bit of a lighter uh, composition, there's a lot of citrus elements. It's expected that it's not going to last as long, and the projection on this one was really good for the first hour and a half to two hours. It didn't become a skin scent up until about the three and a half to four hour mark. But at five hours, you really had to dig your nose into wherever you sprayed it in order to be able to smell this one on your skin. But look, smell it, brother. Me. That's about an hour ago. So on your skin, it actually does smell salty. <laughs> That's just me. That's just you, your salty personality. I'm kidding. I love you. Look at that. Look at this. You see the abuse I have to endure? <laughs> no, we're not on anything. We're just having a good time. We're fun. I was recently in Spain, so I just came back. So it's a pleasure to see my good friend uh, again after a week of being away from one another. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Longevity on this one is decent. Um, the presentation I also think is quite nice. Some brands do flankers really well, in my opinion. Thierry Mugler does mm-hmm. flankers wonderfully well, especially with the Pure line. This one, okay, I think we've exhausted it quite a bit. Let's see if we can do something different. But ultimately, I do really, really enjoy this one. So if you happen to be at your local Macy's or Hudson's Bay Company where I purchased this one in the second week of July, I'll definitely go out there, check it out, try it. Hopefully you like it and you'll end up buying a bottle. I really hope you took something of value from this video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you will be kept up to date on future videos. And that includes, of course, reviews just like this, top 10s, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, and a whole lot more. And also remember to click that bell notification and remember to enable all notifications. This way you tell YouTube you're interested in this content and you will always be kept up to date. Carlos's information will be down below as well. Thank you for watching, guys. Love you, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye.